When I started reading a book a week, now over three years ago, I had no idea how much it would change my life. I was able to expose myself to new ideas, new cultures, and just make my life a whole, whole lot richer. Now the way that I've approached reading has changed a lot in the past. At first I was just focused on reading a book a week. And that was okay, it really got me into the habit and it kept me kind of disciplined in staying up and not missing weeks. But I started to dodge books. There would be these big books that I thought were interesting and, and I wanted to read, but I, I couldn't get through them in a week. And so in order to keep up that number, I wouldn't read them. And, and that didn't seem right to me. So last year I decided that I wasn't gonna go for a book a week. Instead, I was just gonna make a list of books and I was gonna go through those. But then the pandemic hit and I did not read as much during the pandemic as I did in a normal year, which is a little bit odd because I suddenly had way more time on my hands and I could have spent that reading, but the world felt like a pretty dark place and a lot of the books that I had picked for that year were pretty dark books. And I wasn't reading because I was enjoying it. it. I was thinking about reading as something that I had to do. And when it becomes a chore like that, as it becomes in school, then you don't wanna do it. Reading, in my opinion, is most valuable when it's done for fun when you're doing it because you know it'll make your life richer and because you know that it's enjoyable. It's a fun thing to do. Exploring these ideas, exploring these worlds is at the end of the day, such a rewarding task just in and of itself, regardless of how it'll help you develop or help you learn or whatever. It's just fun to play with your brain like that. So for 2021, what I've done is I've come up with a list of ideas rather than a list of books. And these are themes that I wanna learn more about this year themes that I want to explore and have fun with and enjoy. So I want to share with you some of those ideas and uh, some of the books that I'm planning on reading this year. In 2020, I did a lot of fiction reading and fiction really stood out to me last year because it was a way to have adventures without actually having adventures, if that makes sense. Having to stay in at home uh, and, and not be able to go out there into the, into the great big world and, and do the things that I want to be doing. Uh, I found a lot of solace in reading these great fiction stories and just diving into their worlds and really getting lost in the adventures. Now, one of the things that I've noticed about my fiction reading in the past is that I've been very focused on a few genres, a few areas, primarily Western sci-fi. And that's cool, you know, I enjoy it. Uh, and, and those are some of my favorite types of books to read. I don't want to talk down on that at all. But what I want to do this year is I kind of want to explore more of the world of fiction because it's a big, rich world. And so where I'm starting is as I'm starting with some international fiction. There's a couple countries I want to learn more about. I want to learn more about India right now. So right now I'm reading uh, some Rahintan Mystery, a, a Fine Balance is what I started with. Love it so far. Really, really good. I'm about halfway through. Um, and I'm just going to progress and, and find a couple countries that I want to learn more about and that I want to learn more about their cultures and read some fiction. And I think it's, it's a really interesting way, uh, without being able to travel, to learn more about cultures. So if you have some books that you'd recommend uh, that, that kind of fit into that category, would love to hear them in the comments. The second category that I'm interested in right now is history, and in particular, 20th and, and 19th century uh, Western history. I, I've realized that I don't really understand how our society got to where it is in any kind of meaningful way. I have a little bit of history, right? I took history courses in middle school and high school and a couple in university, but I just wanna learn more because I think it's so fascinating to hear the stories of humans before you and how they've contributed to building the world that you live in now. Like, I think that's such an important thing to know. And I just, I don't know very much. I think history books are also really good for putting things into context. So when there are big things happening in the world, kind of being able to zoom out and, and place them in the larger scheme of things uh, can make them a little bit less overwhelming, at least in my experience. So with that, one of the books that I'm looking at is Guns, Germs, and Steel. Uh, which, if you're a history buff, I know there's a little bit of controversy about. I'd, I'd love to hear your opinions. From my understanding, I've had a few friends read it and, and tell me that they really enjoyed it and they thought it was really great. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd love to hear if you have more thoughts on that or if you are really into history, if you've got books that are, uh, that are up those lines because that's, that's one of my big focuses for the year. So the third category, third category is a little bit of a weird one and I'll explain it more. Uh, it, it's psychedelics. And 
I fell down this rabbit hole when I was taking a course last semester on mental health. And we were talking about antidepressants. And we were talking about how antidepressants don't work for everyone. They work really well for some people, but for a lot of people, they, they just don't work. And we're kind of in the middle of a huge mental health crisis right now in Canada, in America, and I would argue worldwide. I haven't seen a whole lot of data worldwide. I've, I've only seen it for here at home. So the question of how do you treat mental illness is, is a really important question. And one of the answers that has been proposed is by using psychedelics. Now, to say that psychedelics have a, a controversial history is to put it pretty lightly. They've got a hugely controversial history, from the discovery, uh, synthesis of, of LSD and Hoffman uh, in, the, in the kind of mid-20th century, to uh, the you know, craze with Timothy Leary at Harvard and, and the psilocybin experiment at, at Harvard, and uh, the subsequent kind of demonization of him by Nixon, uh, calling him the world's most dangerous, or the, America's most dangerous man, rather. Um, psychedelics have been, been through this crazy cycle of uh, really high potential in terms of, of medical um, applicability to things like addiction, to things like depression, anxiety, PTSD. Um, and also they've been kind of at the, at the bottom of the, of the cultural kind of stomping grounds. And what we're seeing now is we're seeing a bit of a renaissance in the scientific community led by a few really, really legitimate researchers out of places like John Hopkins University who are looking at psychedelics uh, from, a, from a purely medical perspective. They're going, trying to go through the FDA and trying to say, hey, you know, we have all this preliminary data, we have all these people uh, at organizations like MAPS and, and, and just from anecdotal experience who have said using psychedelics has helped their uh, mental health immensely. So why can't we investigate this when we can administer these drugs in a safe and controlled setting? Isn't it at least worth it to try, right? Even though there's all this cultural baggage that's come along with it, why don't we try in this setting to, to, to take this as medicine? So all of that to say, this is an issue I'm passionate about, mental health. It's something really near and dear to my heart. And I've seen firsthand how important treatment can be. And so the exploration of potential treatments like this, I just think is, is deeply important. And when it's been held back for decades now, um, because of a lot of, a lot of stigma, because of a lot of cultural baggage, uh, I think it's important to kind of push the envelope on that, but in a safe, scientific and controlled way. So the first book that I read on this was, was last year, kind of into this year, uh, and that was How to Change Your Mind by Michael Pollan. If you haven't read it, I really recommend that you do. It's, it's a really fascinating read. And now I'm looking at uh, Hoffman's book, LSD, My Problem Child. Now, th this is a topic that people get very excited about. They, they get very attached to. I'm trying to stay a little bit more detached, a little bit more analytical. Um, I just think that it's really important that this gets explored because if later clinical trials back up the results of early clinical trials, then this could be a breakthrough medication for mental health at a time when we need it so very bad. The final big idea that I want to explore this year in my reading is I want to explore economics on a few different scales. So the first thing that I'm looking at right now, I'm really fascinated with the idea of debt and the idea of credit and how that's influenced our society's development. I think it's such an interesting question to think about how for so many thousands of years, you know, economic growth was relatively stagnant until this idea of credit and debt came along and then things ballooned. And the question is, where do we go from there? What, what happens next? So there's a book on my shelf right now called Debt, The First 5,000 Years, and it's an anthropology book. And very clearly, this also ties into the history theme of this year, where I want to learn more about how we got to where we are. Obviously, one of the most powerful factors in the past few hundred years of history has been the, the absolute rise of capitalism. And so I think studying that is something that I really want to do. I want to understand that more uh, because I think it's important to understanding the world that we're in today. Without knowing that history, it, it becomes a lot more difficult to understand the systems and the structures that we participate in right now. And on another scale, but it, it's still related to, to economics, I've been getting a little bit more interested in uh, the stock market, in investing, in kind of understanding finance on a more personal scale. 
I just think it's an important thing to do when you're young to set yourself up for you know the rest of your life. It, it gives you a lot of freedom. So there's a couple books that I'm considering reading. I, I haven't really married myself to any of them yet. Um, one of them is Security Analysis by Benjamin Graham. I think I've heard that is like one of the seminal works in uh, value investing. Warren Buffett obviously refers to it a lot. Um, I think value investing is alive and well today, by the way. I know some people might not believe that. Um, I definitely think it is. But that, that book might be a, a lot to chew. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, but I might give it a shot. Uh, otherwise, there's a, there's a couple other books out there. Um, I'm kind of starting with recommendations from uh, people I really trust uh, and then working back from there. But if you have any recommendations, I uh, would love to hear them as well. So those are the four really kind of big ideas that I want to focus a lot of my reading in on this year, as well as just having fun with reading and reading books that look interesting to me and compelling. And I'm sure that the ideas that I'm interested in will evolve as the year evolves and as I get introduced to more ideas and more books and you know who knows what the year will end up with in terms of what I read and, and what I what I don't read. I'd love to hear what you think if you have recommendations for books under these categories and themes or if you have some ideas that you're interested in and, and books that you're exploring those ideas with let me know. I, I would love to hear from you in the comments and uh, I'm always looking for great recommendations. That's one of my you know, favorite things about posting about books on social media is that I always have just a plethora of, of recommendations of really, really excellent books. Some of my favorite books that I've read were recommended to me on the internet. I'd now like to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. Now I use Audible pretty much every day when I'm walking, when I'm on my way into the office, or when I'm just around the house. It's my favorite way to really get lost in a story. Recently, the story that I've been getting lost in is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. What I've been loving about American Gods is that you can really put yourself in the shoes of the main character, which is something that I find you can't always do with sci-fi when it's set in the far future or in, the, in a distant past or some alternate reality. This is sci-fi that is built on the late 20th century, kind of early 21st century in America, so it's very relatable. And there's no better place to listen to it or any audio content than on Audible. I've listened to upwards of 30 audiobooks through Audible now, and the quality has been outstanding on every one. And just recently, they've launched their Plus catalog, which gives you access to things like guided meditations, podcasts, and so much more. And it's all included with an Audible membership. If you want to listen to American Gods or any other audiobook in Audible's massive collection, as well as their new Plus collection, all for free, you can get a 30-day free trial of Audible membership by going to audible.com slash johnfish or texting code johnfish to 500-500. That's audible.com slash johnfish or text johnfish to 500-500. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to subscribe. We are over 900,000 now, so we're getting really close to that million, um, and that is just a mind-boggling number to me. I'm, I'm grateful every day. So if you want to subscribe, I really do appreciate it. It, it means a lot to me. Um, and if not, no worries. Um, I hope you're doing well. Hope you can carry yourself out there and uh, be good.